Welcome to Reconvene 2022 Emerging Talent Talks, brought to you by our partner, Gran Centenario Cristalino Tequila. We're going to bring out someone who's got a background that is very different from, I think, from from really any that you have run across in commercial real estate, I, I'd be willing to, to bet. Um, and when I announced that we were accepting uh, applications for these talks, I, I explicitly listed as one of the criteria that, um, that, that we wanted people who had done a few deals and then were looking to do, to do more. And um, this person has not done any of her own deals. However, as I think you'll see when you start to hear about her background, um, uh, you should not hold that against her. Certainly, I don't. And uh, I think that she has a very bright future doing um, the kind of thing that, that, that she's doing. So w without uh, any, any further delay, um, let me welcome out Shiloh Bear from Creek Development. Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, it's my pleasure and our honor. Um, so I'm going to be really honest. Um, your I noticed you on Twitter, uh, and uh, and the and, it, and as soon as you started writing about what you do, and we're going to get into that in a second, it immediately started. Um, it, it started buzzing for me a memory of how we got started which was in doing a lot of fee development. M many people here know, we. I think I renovated 30 buildings that I do not have any equity in. Okay, when we were bootstrapping Adaptive, we just, we could, we, there was a, an opportunity that was there and uh, it was so large and we had so few capital relationships that we ended up renovating all these buildings for other people. I think Tal's actually here, he's one of them. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and we just, so we got cash fees and we made a fortune for a lot of other people. In doing that, we learned a ton. It was like going to graduate school in real estate development on someone else's dime. Uh, and so when I started to hear Shiloh's story, it immediately reminded me of that period in our career and that I know how that that set us up for success and that's, and that's kind of why I got interested in talking to you. So let's jump right in. I want to hear first about your background. How did you get to this, uh, this, this place that you're in now? Yeah, sure. I, I think probably like a certain number of people in this room, I came to real estate from a very roundabout way. Uh, I think there's your traditional path that everyone knows. Um, I'm from a very rural town uh, in Oklahoma and where people don't go to college, much less buy real estate. I don't know, it's just like not something that I knew about at all. And um, when things, I kind of hit a rough patch when I was a teenager and I went, um, I applied to go to a, a magnet boarding school. That's free. So if you get in, you go. Um, that feeds into the University of Oklahoma. I got there and I was just like, I'm just going to study engineering because that there are a lot of scholarships. I can figure out how to pay for college. I had a really good advisor that was like, you need scholarships, so this is, this is your path. Um, and then I graduated and, and like engineering just wasn't a fit for me, so I... But I just want to say how remarkable that is. First of all, you're a woman coming, a teenage woman coming from a rural town in Oklahoma, getting yourself into a highly competitive STEM boarding school and then going and studying engineering. Thank you, yeah. Okay. So, um, I, I, did, I didn't, uh, like the whole time I was like, I don't know if I belong here. But, I, but you know, later, much later, I found out that there were actually a fair number of people out there who were also looking for some kind of housing stability. It wasn't just um, people that, you know, had a great life and wanted to go to a STEM boarding school. Um, so I, I ended up in construction. So I, I had done a summer program um, at University of Oklahoma, um, at UC Berkeley. And so I ended up in the Bay. I, like, no, I went there once and I was like, this place is beautiful. I'm definitely coming, I'm coming back. I'm gonna figure that out. So I went to the Bay and I started working for a construction company just up through the trades. I actually started a cabinet shop, construction company. So you're literally like, so you, you're, you're, you're starting in like literally in the cabinet shop yeah, of a construction company. Yeah, $9 an hour. <laughs> $9 an hour. <laughs> yeah. So like literally building cabinets. Like building cabinets, cabinets. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what happened? Um, that construction, that cabinet shop um, partnered with a construction company. I knew CAD, so I started getting pulled into doing design and construction management, managed a couple small residential projects. 
um, moved on to doing bigger projects, started doing operations for them, all the hiring, like a lot of the logistics. Um, and I just felt like I was outgrowing them. So I went to work for, thank you. <laughs> I mean, it was years, but yes. Um, I went to work for a developer in San Francisco who was doing um, multifamily development. I wanted to be a developer. I didn't really know what that meant, but I was like, if I can just get in, I'll figure it out. Um, so they were like, do you know how to like, you know, scout land and do entitlements? And I was like, yes. <laughs> Let me Google that. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was a lot of fake it till you make it, but I- We've all done that. Yeah, I figured it out. And they were, they were a good team. They were a small group. Um, they, uh, they built multifamily and, and repositioned large multifamily. I learned from those two projects, you know, those two jobs that one, I did not want to do high-end residential and two, um, multifamily in the Bay Area is super competitive. Um, I started my own firm in 2016. Uh, so let's talk about yeah. that. So you're working okay. for this for this multifamily developer. Yeah. You realize you don't want to be in that business, but you learned from them. I did, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think the biggest takeaway I got from them was about land entitlement and like how like that's such a key to the work that we still do today. So 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 then you decided to go off on your own. I did. And talk to us about that decision, did you did you have savings by that point? Did you have customers? Like how did how did you get the courage to make that leap? Yeah, I I did not really have much of either of those. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I wasn't I wasn't loving the place that I was at for a bunch of reasons that were unrelated to the work. I, I loved the work, um, and I I knew I wanted to go on my own eventually, and we were when I had wanted to earlier. It was kind of too deep in the recession. It just felt like timing wasn't good, and I could just feel the economy picking up. So I I knew. In 2016, I was like, okay, we're, we've got some steam behind us. I can figure it out. And so you go off on your own, and what is this firm that you create? What does it do to start with? Um, it's called Creek Development, and my idea was we were going to do developments, even though I knew that was going to take a while. So um, aspirational naming. Uh, but I, um, I just started calling relationships I knew. So I called architects and I was like, do you know anyone? I knew I wanted to be in the commercial space. I hadn't really done that much work in commercial, but I just called people and said, do you know anyone who needs this type of work? And <coughs> Excuse me, and what kind of work was that? I didn't really know, but I, <laughs> but I knew it wasn't multifamily and it wasn't residential. All right, so, but, it, but, but it's construction management, right? It's construction management, yeah. So design and construction management. Um, and, and, and entitlement. So uh, what was very fortuitous is just almost right out the gate, I met two developers who do a lot of work in the Bay Area who um, gener generally do industrial repositioning. So they were, they were buying very old um, industrial assets and at that time converting to creative office or live work. Um, there was a lot of those projects. I just kind of got in, and I think they liked because I, I was really scrappy. Like, they're in it to make money. I'm like, yeah, you don't need this, you don't need that. Like, here's the least that we can do to this building to get it where you want it to be. So walk us through what that, um, you, you've done many of those projects yeah. now, but like maybe, maybe walk us through a prototypical one of those. Like, what is it, like, uh, when are they coming to you? What are you doing? How long does it take? All of that stuff. Yeah, it's changed a little bit. Um, but the, the theme that's the same is we're usually, um, I'm coming in very early, so they're looking at a property. We're often there at their first walks. Um, I'm giving them feedback on, you know, I'm just checking stuff out that is kind of like boots on the ground. What kind of utilities do you have? What, um, how easy is it gonna be to upgrade them? What do your lot lines look like? Like, what do you actually have to do to the parcels? So we're, we're looking at the structure, we're coming in, we're doing, once, if they decide to buy the property, we're usually doing all the due diligence, a lot of the planning. Um, you know, if we're demising, we're coming up with demising plans. Um, and then all the entitlement work, TIs, and then they sell. So you're, so you're walking them through that entire project. It's, so effectively, mm -hmm. like, they're making the decision to buy the building. Yeah. But Otherwise, and, and, and of course agreeing with you what is going to be built, right. and, but then more or less injecting cash and you are the one who is sort of carrying that project from, from there to, to when it's ready right. to be released. Not on every single one, but yes, that's our general, you know, like that's kind of our prototype. So you started out doing this and you've done, you, you met some very active developers who, and, and so how many of those type projects have you done, those construction type management projects? probably 50 or so at this point. So this is what I'm talking about. Thank you. Oh, you guys are so sweet. 
Yeah, so it has been my experience that when someone does that, that's hard. Yeah. Like, there's, there's, there's a lot of our businesses, like, and everyone here knows it, is like, um, a lot of our businesses like, uh, like taste like chicken. I'm stealing this from Brent Bishore. It's like the, you know, re creating the organizational docs and raising money and, you know, filing taxes. We, we all do that almost regard, you know, whatever asset class we're in, all that stuff, okay? The not taste like chicken part, the, 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 the hard part, the, the thing where the edge is, is in this. And, um, and in my experience, you do not get that edge from, you can't, it's not, you can't read it in a book, you can't walk one or a couple of sites and learn it, you have to just get in there and do it a lot of times and come up with a bunch of little tricks. Mm -hmm. and, and so when, when we started to talk and then I started to, to learn how many of these that you did, again, this is where it starts buzzing for me that maybe that there is some edge here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we get, you know, these really interesting logistics questions. Like, you know, somebody has a, a property, it's got five parcels, it's underpowered. It, so, you know, we're looking at it, we're saying, okay, you need to do, you need to get more power and you need fire sprinklers. But you can, if you wait to merge the parcels, you can get one new service per parcel, then you can merge them, then you can do your fire sprinkler, so you're only doing one fire sprinkler service. So it's like, it's, it's, it's actually saving people a ton of money just to like think through the logistics of the process. Which you would only know if you had done this a bunch of times and, and stepped in up. all the different potholes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay, so, you, so you've done 50 of these and over time, you've, it's not just you anymore, right? right. Yeah, I've built a team. Um, I, have, uh, I have a team of eight right now. Um, we're mostly like people who don't really have a real estate background or even necessarily construction background. Um, I would say we're, we're mostly underdogs. We're people that aren't really in this world, but... Um, but you are. But we are. We are. We are. We are. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's it's super fun. I have, a, I have just a great team of people who, I don't know, I consider like if you can provide someone good and stable employment, that's, that's a gift to your community, to the people that you love. And, and so it's important to me. Like that's really an important piece of my business and of my legacy is like, I want, I want to be able to give people good jobs. So you got this team now and you've done yeah. a lot of work together. Yes. And, um, but it was called Creek Developments, not Creek Project Management. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Again, right. aspirational. <laughs> so, um, so now, as, as, as any of us do, who with the skill set that you've got, you're starting to think about like, okay, how do I actually get on the equity side of this? Right, exactly. Because you probably made, a, made people a lot of money over the years. Yes, yes, so, they'll tell me sometimes how much. <laughs> they shouldn't do that, that's Ouch. so cruel. Ouch, <laughs> I know, it hurts, it hurts my core. Um, so so uh, tell me about that process of trying, because that, I mean, I just said it's the taste like chicken part, the you know the. But from your perspective, actually, maybe it's doesn't. It, maybe it is complicated. It is. It's. I mean, everything I do is brand new. You know. So, I, you know, I don't. I don't even know who to ask a lot of times. I'm just like making my way through the world. Um, so we started by doing small developments off our balance sheet because that's that's something I understand. I, I've. I uh, bought multifamily in Oklahoma where I lived. I was My husband and I managed a 26-unit apartment building when we were young and scrappy. So like, I, uh, there are pieces of it that I understand. Um, so we, I know how to do entitlement work, so we started doing some small land development plays. And this is with your own money? This is with my own money, yeah, with like our company money. Which you didn't inherit from anyone. You just oh, hell rolled no. this up from, right, okay. So no, I'm, I'm just, because like, you, you say this in, in a, in a self-effacing way, and then I'm like, I'm sitting, sitting there going, oh, like, because living in the Bay Area is not cheap and you're, and yeah. you're, you have all these employees and you're, so you're generating cash flow, paying the employees, yeah. paying taxes, because it's a very tax inefficient business. Yes. Uh, uh, trying to save and live yourself. Yes. And then develop a balance sheet to then go do your own, right. Okay. Exactly. So you've done a couple of these smaller type uh, entitlement projects. Yeah. Yeah. So we've, we've done a few of those and then about a year ago, I was like, okay, it's time. Like I'm going to, I'm going to raise money and I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to buy my own building and, and do this, um, you know, industrial repositioning. We do a lot of science. I had new tenants. I, you know, I know the brokers. I'm like, this is the time. Um, that was in September. <laughs> um, I, I had been looking for deals for a while. I had a couple that I really liked um, that I thought were good. I had got one in contract in January. I had been slowly raising. 
Um, January, I really kicked it in. I had a long uh, DD period with these people. They knew my stories, so they were, they were like, we'll wait for you to figure it out. Um, so I started really raising in earnest in January. And um, by March, I had a pretty good amount. Um, but then mid-March, the sky has started falling. And a lot of people that I uh, that were early in were like, hey, actually, um, most of my money was Netflix stock or Bitcoin or like, I'm, I'm out. And it turned out that, you know, the people that were left were like the real estate people who they know me, they, they know my process, they were, they were still in, but they, were, it, they really wanted it to be an all equity deal because it's, this particular one was hairy and it needed time and debt adds risk. And so I, I was just, I just kept raising. And you were in a position to, to raise enough equity to do the thing. I tried, man. I no, tried. I mean, I mean, you know, th these guys were like, just so easy. Just $200,000 <laughs> from 20 people. Mm. And I was just like, oh, my God. No, it ended up being like $50,000, like in 40 checks. I mean, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. And it was, it was unexpected. It was people, the people that ended up coming through were not... You know, I had my list. By the end of it, it was like the plumber I work with. You know, like like seriously, it was it was like contractors and you know just people I met along the way who knew me. Well, and a lot of us have had similar experiences of of cobbling together that that those those first oh, yeah. checks. It's not easy. And I would say, and and did that one go or not? It did not go. For those of you who follow me, <laughs> it was it, it was painful. It took a while. Um, it, in the end, uh, we the seller had a, a code violation that it, that delayed closing. We couldn't record, and that um, pushed out the loan. They retraded up three percent. Um, at the same time, uh, several of my LPs were just like, you know, I think if you just back out now, you can still get this deal in nine months, and you'll be happier. So I bailed. I sent everybody their money back. Which is a sad feeling. It was very sad. It's, it's very <laughs> for, how, for how much I worked on it, it was very sad. But I think, I mean, I think, um, and it's probably not going to make you feel any better, but um, timing-wise, actually, I mean, maybe not the worst thing in the world. I think it was actually great. I think it was one that had I closed when I did, I'd have some regret about it. And I also think it is still out there. Like there are still deals. And you know, we call people for deals. We do a like cold calling and people that wouldn't talk a year ago are now calling us and saying, like, hey, does your offer still stand? I'm like, no. <laughs> Not that offer. <laughs> no. We it might have another it offer. It doesn't. But yes, I'm happy to talk. Yeah. So I do think there's gonna be like it feels like it's loosening. I feel like there's there are better deals, there are things. And and honestly, it, it had it gone perfectly, I wouldn't have learned nearly as much. Like having like stepped in every hole and made every mistake, I, I learned an incredible amount. Well, I think you're, I think, you know, and I think probably people here would agree that you've put yourself in a pretty interesting position if, as many of us expect, more opportunities start to emerge over the next the next couple of years. And that's effectively why I wanted you to, to be on stage now. Oh, cool. Um, so let's talk about, um, in concrete terms, like what are you, what do you need? I mean, obviously we just talked about it. Like you probably need some capital. I need money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I need, I need, I need a capital partner. I need, I mean, I, I I found that trying to um, syndicate, which was what the people around me did, so I tried that, and it was tough. So I either need, um, you know, fewer bigger checks, or one partner, or JV, or I, I got to get there somehow. Well, particularly because these deals, there's a lot of moving parts to them, right? Exactly. So like, it's it, with syndication works really well when it's like a plain vanilla multifamily, or yes. whatever, easy to explain. When you're talking about, well, there's five different parcels, and we're gonna, we might do this, but we might have to do that. Right. You really need someone who's sophisticated and going right. to hang with there's you some environmental that. problems there's a tenant problem there's you know it, it was it was messy and 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 a tough one to start out on um so so a cat so so one or more capital partners one yes thing. um yeah other things that that we or people in this room might be able to help you in terms of helping you on your journey what is there anything else I mean, I, I think just introductions to people, and also you guys are so amazing. You answer all my questions. I ask people questions all the time, and you guys are always like, "Oh, here's like," I'm just like, "What does that mean? What is it? What does what somebody said this?" And it's this this community is incredible. I mean, these people are like every one of you are so helpful to me. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be here. You know, I ask a lot of questions. <laughs> I know. Well, no, well, I mean, I, I me too, and I and I found uh, I, I I too have found it valuable. I will say, so um, 
in my partnership with, I have a partner, uh, I, I raise the capital and I, and I do the acquisitions, but my partner does all the design and construction management, very much like you do. And, and, and so in talking to you both before this and also today, it occurs to me, and we, we talked about this backstage too, it, it occurs to me that um, someone who is a deal person who maybe has capital relationships, but who is lacking that edge or whatever it is, the ability to actually get your hands dirty and go turn around an for industrial sure. building, uh, might be someone who would be interesting to talk to, for you to partner with. That would be great. If you're out there, come find me. If you can introduce me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's 100%. I don't have the finance background. You know, I, I was piecing together an Excel model that y'all would have been... <laughs> shaking your head at. But I got there, you know? I mean, I'd never seen a deck before. Like, I was like, can somebody send me a deck so I can copy it? Um, so, you know, we're, like, I finance um, leasing. I don't have a ton of experience leasing. So anybody that has that background, that's helpful too. So I think, I mean, I just, and, and maybe just turning turning to the, to the group here. I mean, I, I think it has been my experience that I've, I have frequently run across people who you know, maybe maybe grew up at a country club, maybe went to a good school, whatever it is, who have the the financy part of it down, work maybe worked in acquisition somewhere, but don't really have any kind of like a differentiated a differentiated lens, let's call it, to uh, you know, on real estate. And so in in when I met you, it was like, oh, this is the differentiated lens. And um and so and so maybe we're putting a, a, a billboard up here to say that if, if if there is someone like that out there, like maybe maybe it'd be worth talking to you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much. This is so, so cool. You guys are incredible. Thank you.